Hello and welcome to another edition of Client for Life. We're back in the boardroom. Today we're going to benchmark buying an old apartment versus buying a brand new apartment off the plan. What I want you to do is have a look at what the out of pocket costs are. I say to everybody, when you're investing, you want to chase capital growth, rental return. So we're going to benchmark that today as well. So what I want to show you is this. I had clients in yesterday and we were working together to decide whether to buy an old apartment or a new apartment. So I'm going to run you through the exercise that I did with them yesterday. So the old apartment that I found for them is actually in Bentley, right near Nepean Highway. So close it could almost be Brighton. Lovely group of shops down the road, beautiful little street and it's like a villa unit with its own driveway access and a nice little courtyard front yard and a nice little backyard. So it was ironically about the same size as the apartment as well. So we're almost looking like for like. The first thing to notice is the stamp duty. So when the purchase costs for this one were $29,000, 750 or 570, they were the purchase costs because there's no stamp duty savings. So the next thing that we had to look at was because it's an old apartment, we're looking at a lower rental. So the borrowings are very similar, the interest rate is the same, but because it's an old apartment, I got my rental team to have a really good look at it and they benchmarked the rental at about 370. They said between 360 and 380, so I've gone for the middle point. The interest is the same. So the rental, when you look at the rental figure at 370, the income for the property is 18,885. Okay, so this is a capital cost. This is your actual income. Now, the mortgage is 26,170. So that's an actual out of pocket. And the expenses to run the property were quite high at 7,600. And 93. The reason that they're about 2,000 higher than normal is the amount of maintenance. If you go onto the Real Estate Institute of Victoria's website, they've got some indicatives of around about repairs, and that's pretty much what we've adopted about $2,000 a year. Carpets, curtains, hot water services, kitchens, bathrooms, you need to maintain your properties, obviously. And this property is built in the 60s, so it's really getting on. So we've got costs there. So we've got income coming in here, those costs. We can write our loan costs off, which is $446. So our first cut of negative gearing, we are $15,007 out of pocket. So if you aren't getting your tax refund up front, that's what you've got to take out of your pocket for the year before you get your refund. Okay, now because it's an old property, there is zero depreciation for your section 40 and there's zero for your section 43. So what we've got here is a total loss of your, on your property of $34,308. Okay, now what we do here is if you have a look at the actual, <clears throat> pardon me, because you have in fact amassed a loss of 34,000 and let's say you're on $80,000 a year. So you add together your rent, which is your 18,885. So you add your rent together for your total rent, total income, and then you take off your losses. Now in this case, you're actually running at an overall loss of, um, you've got your 34,000, you're getting tax back from the government on your losses of your refund of 5,363. So that now takes, so with your 15,000 loss, you can now deduct your 5,000 from there, 5,363. So your overall loss is 9,644. If you divide that by 52 weeks in the year, you're out of pocket $185 per week. Okay, now let's look at the other property. So I've done all the figures up here. Might help if I make the screen a bit bigger. 
Okay, now this property was a little bit more money. It's the closest I could find. Now we sold this property off the plan about July last year. The purchase cost was $6,000. In that is $3,500 of stamp duty. So you've got a huge, you can see your purchase cost, $29,570 versus $6,000. So with your income as well, we have been onto realestate.com, looked at the rentals in the area. It's a brand new, beautiful, it's about a 75 square metre, two bedroom apartment, right in the heart of the village. So I would say 470 is quite a reasonable figure. So the income there is actually going to be 24,206 compared to 18,000. Now the mortgage is very similar because we've got similar amounts of money that we're loaning. So our mortgage is 25,532. Now there's not a lot of repairs and maintenance in a brand new property, but there is insurance and lighting and everything like that. So the body corporates here are 6330. I've overestimated those a little bit. I'd always prefer to go over than under. Most people that have worked with me know that that's how I operate. So your immediate cash flow out of pocket is $7,656. So if once again you haven't got your tax withholding, here you're out of pocket $15,000 a year, here you're out of pocket $7,600. Now because we do get the depreciation, we actually get to write off $6,000 for 40 years of the property's life. And, and the section 43, which is your fixtures and fittings, this one here is accumulative, like it's 4,400 in the first year, it's 3,800 in the second year, it's 3,300 in the third year. So that does go down. And once again, we get to write off our loan costs, which are almost identical. So here we've amassed losses that come to $42,000. So our loss base here is $42,706. So once again, if we're on an $80,000 wage, we add our rent of $24,206. So for our tax return, we look at our total income minus our total losses on our property and that basically triggers a refund for us of $6,461. So over here we got a refund of five but here we've got a refund of six. So if I write that out to the side like I have on the other side. So the comparative refunds are slightly higher here but what happens now is when we deduct this from this, we are actually out of pocket $1,195 a year, which is basically $23 a week. So the difference of buying brand new is what it actually costs you to hold. There's a lot of theory out there in the market that buying an old rundown property and renovating it is how to make your money. I don't agree with that. I've owned 43 properties. I've renovated about 15 of them. I have to be paying the interest while they're empty, being renovated. I've got the renovation costs. I've got the project management. I've got my day job to consider. Something that I explain to a lot of people is decorating is one thing, renovating is another. So here's the difference. I'm out of pocket $185 here. I'm out of pocket $23 here. But my return on my investment is, has to be noted. So at the moment, if you look at return on investment, for an older property, a new property, it's around about the same. Let's go conservative at 6%. Now my rental return over here is only 3.4%, so so far my return on my investment is 9.4%. I have no refund, no, I'm not in credit here, so I'm still out of pocket, okay? So that's something to seriously consider. Over here, the capital growth is the same, but I'm actually on 4.5%, so I'm actually getting 10.5% here plus I have to consider that 
I'm disadvantaged here and also I've got the unknown of renovating and downtime. So when you're considering investing, what makes my program so successful is my clients often come and say, Lynn, I don't even remember I've got an investment property because they're not hassled with maintenance. They're not constantly approving things, having to look at quotes for repairs and maintenance. The property just sits along. I call them silent sleepers. They do their job. But what are we in it for? for? We're in it for a return on our investment. So do consider that when you're choosing your next investment property. Thank you for listening.